Hey, you see, that's uh, Crystal Ball. She's a lefty, um, and uh, she is, uh, you know, I don't know how far left, but it sounds like she's pretty far left. When you hear what she has to say, it's going to be pretty far left. Let me put on my headphones so I can hear what she actually says. And, uh, and you're going to hear, uh, the first thing she'll do is she's going to go to a clip of uh, Ian Omao. Uh, statement that everybody's upset about, uh, about dismantling the system. We'll talk about that, then we'll talk about Crystal Ball's uh, uh, diatribe over it, basically in support of Omar. Making heads explode. Latest controversy was sparked when she said the following. As long as our economy and political systems prioritize profit without considering who is profiting. I mean... Uh, what kind of profit would she be okay with? My assumption is that she is a committed socialist. So the only kind of profit she would be okay with is if the workers were profiting. What she resents is that the owners, the capitalist the entrepreneurs, the business owners are profiting. That is her objection because she's a, a real socialist. Who is being shut out? Who is being shut out? I, I, I don't know who is being shut out. Perpetuate this inequality. And of course, the standard is inequality. Perpetuate the inequality. The idea is, the idea is that inequality is the evil. And they conflate, they conflate political inequality with economic inequality. They don't differentiate. Because I'm all for equality. Political equality. What I'm against, right, so I'm all for, what I'm against is economic equality. That's a disaster. And it's a huge violation of rights. And it's a huge violation of the idea of political equality. Economic equality necessitates political inequality. It necessitates taking from some and giving to others. It necessitates not treating everybody the same in terms of rights, in terms of freedoms. But you see, they use inequality as a catch-all. You might think they're talking about racial inequality before the law, but what they're really talking about is that plus economic inequality. And the only solution to economic inequality is, of course, socialism or egalitarianism or communism or some form of, 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 some form of egalitarianism. So we cannot stop at criminal justice system. We must begin the work of dismantling the whole system of oppression wherever we find it. Now, what is oppression? Now, note again equivocation, right? I'm all for dismantling any system that oppresses people in a sense of physical oppression, coerced oppression, or just irrational discrimination. But that's not what she's talking about. She's talking about oppression of the workers, oppression of economic oppression. So she's talking about in economic inequality, which is the product of economic, quote, oppression. She's talking about capitalism as being a system of oppression. Inherent in capitalism is oppression, oppression of the workers. And while the workers get paid a salary, the whole complaint that the Marxists have is that the owner of the business makes a profit on their salary. The owner of the business pays them less than what they produce. Well, of course, the owner of the business has to provide them with machinery, with rent, with a risk-free salary. He has to provide them with a market. He has to provide them with the vision, the organization, the management, everything that goes into building a business. So yes, he's making a profit off his workers, but people like Richard Wolff, the pseudo-economist, but Marxist, committed Marxist, don't get that. To them, it's a mystery. To them, the worker should get paid his entire worth to the owner because they believe that value is intrinsic. They don't see that the worker is worth something to the owner but that doesn't make him worth that. It doesn't mean he needs to be paid that. 
Indeed, he wouldn't have the job if he was paid, in a sense, his full everything supposedly that he produces. But this goes back to Marx. This is Marx materialism. This is the misunderstanding of the role of the mind. The role of the mind. Right. So, it's, um, it's purely from a Marxist perspective this oppression is coming. Omar is an economic Marxist. She is, when she talks about uh, dismantling the whole system of oppression, what she's talking about is dismantling whatever remnants of capitalism are left. She's talking about dismantling the mixed economy for the sake of what? Dismantling the mixed economy for the sake of socialism full-blown, all-out socialism, the workers owning the means of production, which as we know, as I think this audience knows well, is a recipe for absolutely, absolute disaster, absolute catastrophe. In a free market, there is no such thing as economic oppression. Economic oppression is a consequence, if you take your word seriously, is a consequence of force. In a free market, there's no force. A free market, it's all voluntary exchange. You get paid based on what you're worth. And if you don't like what you get paid, you go, you go find a different employer. And if nobody's willing to pay you more than your employer is paying you right now, that's what you're worth. And not a penny more. And indeed, the fact that you're willing to go and take that wage suggests that you're better off for it. That indeed, your other alternatives constitute a, you know, constitute something worse. No, economics is form of imperialism. Matthew, you know, go read some real economics. Marxism is not economics. Marxism is a, a, politi a bogus political philosophy. Marx was a lousy economist. Almost everything he ever did economic-wise has been proved wrong, completely, absolutely. And uh, you, you got to start over. You got to start over your thinking. We've got a Marxist here on the, on the uh, thing. Yeah, Africa was rich. Africa was rich before China got there, and China is exploiting them. Of course, Africa was rich before the imperialists came and stole all their wealth. C give me a break. Africa's always been poor. The world is not a zero-sum game. The world is not about exploitation. The world is about win-win relationships, building, making, producing, expanding wealth. But this is the, this is the point, this zero-sum mentality, this idea that economics is exploitation, that capitalism is exploitation, that capitalism is systemic oppression, you can say Matthew's a dummy, as, as Frank does, but this is the dominant view out there. This is becoming a dominant view out there. More and more and more people believe this. More and more and more people are buying into this. More and more and more policy is going to be based on this. And this is, again, left and right. Tucker Carlson, to some extent, believes this. Finance is oppressive. Private equity is destructive. Trade is zero-sum. The President of the United States believes that. Marx was a Kantian. Yes, he was. So, the, these notions, these Marxist notions of economics, have seen a real, you know, real, I guess, comeback. They're all over the place. I see them everywhere. And it truly is scary. Somebody says, no, Marx was really a Hegelian. Yeah, Marx is a Hegelian, but Hegel is a Kantian. So they're all Kantians in the end. That whole tradition of German philosophy is Kantian. But yes, uh, Marx is directly impacted by Hegel. His whole construction, his whole way he constructs his the theories is, is Hegelian. 
All right, so it's really scary how ideas that are being refuted over and over and over again over the last, what, 12, 14 decades since the 1880s or even before that, since Adam Smith, that ideas that are being refuted in economics over and over and over again keep coming back, keep coming back. And that's Kant. That's saying reality doesn't, you know, we don't know what reality is. In a sense, in a deep sense, we make it up. So reality doesn't matter. Facts don't matter. What matters is your perception at this point in time. And given that our university professors are being leftists for 100 years, over 100 years, I guess it doesn't really, isn't really that surprising that Marxism keeps rearing its ugly head every few, every few decades, only to be slapped down by reality. But in the meantime, it does massive amounts of damage to the world. There's, there's, over the last 120 years, you know, uh, nothing has been more damaging, nothing has been more destructive than Marxist ideology. It, it enslaved a big portion, what, a significant, a majority of the human race for, for, for decades. And of course, remember, even the Nazis were national socialists. And to a large extent, the Nazis came to power as a rebellion against the communists. Without the communists, you never get the Nazis. So Marx is responsible for, you know, hundreds of millions or, 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 or somewhere between 100 to 200 million deaths. And yet, he keeps coming back, keeps coming back. They won't give him up. They, they, and and it's, it's such a primitive, it's such a primitive understanding of the world and a primitive understanding of economics, truly uh, perceptual. There's no thinking involved. There's no conceptualization involved. Think about just the act of trade, which they conceive as zero sum or exploitation. But why would two parties voluntarily engage in a trade if they weren't both going to be better as a consequence. In a free world, there are plenty of opportunities to walk away from one trade and engage in more, more beneficial trades. All right, let's see. Let's, uh, okay, so, so we're not going to talk about Crystal. Krista Ball, I don't know who she is, but I guess she's a, she's a somewhat known leftist. Um, and uh, let's see what she has to say about Omar's statement. So for some reason, this caused RNC research teams, Republican politicians, and reactionary outlets like the Daily Caller to utterly melt down. Marsha Blackburn tweeted, Ilhan Omar took an oath to defend and protect the Constitution, not shred it. Omar and her Marxist comrades are a threat to our democracy. She should resign. Well, I mean, there's a certain sense in which uh, that is true, although not really. I mean, she wants to take the mixed economy further down the road to socialism, where we're heading anyway. Uh, she just wants to accelerate the process. She is a Marxist. She is a socialist. I don't know why that's controversial. That seems obvious. And, and, and Marxism and socialism are anathema to the American Constitution and to the principles on which this country was founded. But, of course, it's, it's kind of funny coming from mixed economy Republicans to argue this and to argue that she should resign when my view is all of them should resign. Democrats, Republicans, they should all be out of there because none of them understand what this country is really about, what the true principles of, the, of this country. And, and, and as I said, I'm the one who really wants to dismantle the whole system. I want to bring about real capitalism. I want to get rid of all government intervention in the economy. All intervention in the economy needs to be done, gone. We need real capitalism in this country. Only then, only then will we be truly free. Only then, to use their terminology, will oppression end in America. Indeed, racism, the cure for racism, is individualism and capitalism. There's almost no political problem in the world out there. There is no political problem in the world out there. The capitalism is not the solution for it. Yeah, what's going on? 
What happened to my mouse? What brave patriots will stand with Marsha Blackburn in defense of our systems of oppression? It's all foolish, of course, but I wanted to actually use this opening of right wing mania to dig into Congresswoman Omar's comments, because, of course, she is 1000 percent correct in her assessment. 1000 percent correct. So uh, Krista Ball is a Marxist, too. Well, it's good to know. And as we've watched the COVID pandemic and millions lose their jobs and their health care and the stock market soar, as we've watched anguished protesters. Know that this is part of the problem, right? What she's identifying is something that is truly troubling and something that is a phenomenon of the mixed economy. On the one hand, we've seen millions of people lose their jobs, businesses shutter. She won't mention businesses because she's anti-business. She's anti-private businesses, right? So she won't mention the business owners that have lost their income that have lost their businesses, that have laid off their people. She'll only mention the workers because that's all she can conceptualize. It's going to all she can uh, recreate. But it's, it's truly stunning that it, it truly is pretty weird, right, that you've got a, an economy that has just shrunk significantly. The estimates are that the United States economy over the next over the, this year will shrink by somewhere between 4 to 5 percent, maybe even more than that. Who knows? I mean, that's shrinking. That's a destruction of wealth. We are going to be, at the end of this, supposedly poorer in terms of, you know, economic production by 5 percent. And yet the stock market is up. It doesn't care. It's kind of flat for the year, as if nothing's happened. And that's confusing. It's confusing to the socialist Marxists, but to them it's obvious. To them it's about, ooh, the, cap the evil capitalists and markets have nothing, you know, markets are just speculative, uh, um, you know, casinos. They have nothing to do with the real economy anyway. But you see, to explain what's going on is complicated. Because the reason millions of people have lost their jobs is to a large extent because of status policies. That is the government shutting our economy down, shutting human life down, rather than doing its job and dealing with pandemic by testing, tra tracing, and isolating. So we shut down the economy for months and months now. And, and by the way, just that, the failure of the government to do its job should be reason enough to go after our politicians, those that are in power today, and replace them all starting with the president and then all of these governors who are completely blowing it, completely. Blue, red, all of them are blowing it completely. But then you have to bring in the Fed, printing $6 trillion, pumping that into the economy, basically implying that maybe they would even buy stocks if the stock market got into trouble. Buying bonds, subsidizing zombie companies, that's not capitalism. So yes, the world as it is today is nuts. It's insane what's going on out there. It really does look like it doesn't make any sense to the common person. I'm not surprised. Crystal seems like, you know, nice lady. Just she's very confused. But it makes sense that you would be confused. It's not easy unless you're an economist, unless you studied economics then it's not easy to figure out what exactly is going on out there. But what's going on out there, we can, we who know what capitalism is, know is not capitalism. But go explain it to people. They don't know. You say, oh, what we want is separation of state from economics. That's so abstract. That's so difficult to imagine. We want private banking. We don't want a Federal Reserve. Whoa. That's so radical. That's so crazy. So people, what they see today looks like exploitation. It looks like the rich who have stocks are doing great. And the rest of the economy and everybody else is getting crushed. And again, there is truth to that. Because the powers to be are making that happen. They're crushing the economy. They're crushing workers. And they're letting, the, in a sense, there's an implicit subsidy for the stock market. But that's cronyism. That's statism. That's socialism. 
That's not capitalism causing all this. And you see, you have to unpackage all these things. Because otherwise, people come to their own conclusions. And it's hard to blame them for coming to their own conclusions. Particularly when nobody out there, nobody out there, is actually educating them. Nobody out there is actually telling them the truth about the world, about what's going on, about who's responsible, and about what the solutions are. You know, you've got a world where the alternatives are, you know, Ihan Omar and Donald Trump. It's a confusing world. Not to me, not to us. We know exactly what's going on. take to the streets and peered over the precipice of utter societal breakdown. If you aren't thinking that a total dismantling is not only the right course, but the most realistic. I'm, I, I believe it's the right course. It's just not the kind of course you would like. Yeah, I'd like to see regulations go to zero. I'd like to see taxes get flat with no deductions or maybe just, just consumption taxes. I'd like to see subsidies go to zero. I'd ultimately like to see welfare and social security, Medicaid go to zero. I'd like to see the total, complete, utter, unequivocal privatization of the healthcare system. And if we did that, if we did that, this COVID-19 would have been easy to deal with. That's the kind of dismantling of the system I think is necessary right now. But to take everything that doesn't work, welfare, socialized medicine, government involvement in finance, call it the Fed, government involvement in the economy, call it regulations and controls, and double up on it because it hasn't worked a little bit, so maybe it'll work if we do it all the time constantly. That's insanity. It's insanity. No way on earth, no one planet earth, has your system of government ever succeeded? And indeed, what it has done, it has impoverished people, turned them to poverty, destroyed their economic system. And in the most radical or most extreme cases, resulted in the deaths of tens of millions of people. That's the system you want to recreate. I mean, this is again the unbelievable nature of the left. They advocate for ideas that you cannot say have not been tried. They advocate for ideas that have been tried over and over and over and over again, fail every time, lead to death, destruction, and poverty every time, and yet they want to do it again. This time it'll be different. This time we'll get it right. This time it'll work. They are truly insane. Capitalism has killed nobody. Capitalism indeed is a system that has brought Everybody who's out of poverty today is out of poverty because of capitalism. Capitalism, to the extent that it has been tried, and it's rare that it's ever been tried, but to the extent that it be tried, has brought people massive amounts of wealth, has expanded life expectancy, has more than doubled, well more than doubled life expectancy, have brought us medical innovation, Technological innovation, transportation innovation, innovation in every field of life. I've seen this stupid meme of capitalism killing a billion because every society in human history that going back thousands of years that has killed people, they say is capitalism. <laughs> they reinvent the word. They redefine it. They make it up. But capitalism is a very particular system. You guys should actually read your Karl Marx. Karl Marx at least, he was wrong on almost everything, but at least he got what capitalism contributed. If you read what about capitalism and, 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 and how capitalism raised the standard of living, how capitalism benefited mankind, indeed Karl Marx believed you had to go through a period of capitalism to break the feudal grip. But he didn't think that a thousand years ago we had capitalism. <laughs> he says capitalism is great until you run out of other people, other people's labor. I mean, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. 
Oh my God. What happens when you run out of people's, uh, other people's labor? You build robots. Give me a frigging break. <laughs> oh God. And, and by the way, we've got still about 5 billion people who are quite happy to engage in labor uh, for capitalists. But when they run out, we'll just, we'll just design robots to replace them. <laughs> um, Marxists are so primitive, so concrete, so perceptual. They, they, they literally can't think. But this is a system that's gaining adherence. This is a system that's winning. And part of why they're winning is that very few people are willing to stand up for capitalism unapologetically and slam the Marxists for what they really are. All the wealth that we have in the world today, almost all of it, 99% of it, has been created over the last 250 years under a little bit of capitalism, not even consistent capitalism. We've only approached real capitalism in a couple of places a couple of times during the last 200 years. It's rare. But we haven't defended it. We haven't been passionate in our friends. So these really superficial ideas keep bubbling up to the surface over and over again. All right, let's go back to Crystal. Practical choice to get out of this? I don't know where you've been, but I can probably guess your class status. So the practical choice to get out of this is socialism. And again, socialism is a system that only creates poverty, only creates destruction, only creates oppression, only creates devastation. That's the practical means of getting out of this. And notice that she says she can guess your class status. Because according to Marx, you are determined by your class. Marx is an anti-free world determinist. He believes that your ideas, your character, who you are and what you are is determined by the class you belong to. You, you don't choose. You don't choose your ideas. Your ideas choose you based on what class you're born to. In that sense, Marx is just like the racists who believe that your ideas come from the color of your skin or for your race. Now, of course, Marx was also racist. He was certainly an anti-Semite. And if you're interested in Marx, the anti-Semite, I've, I've got a talk that you can find online. Just do anti-capitalism, anti-Semitism, Yaron Brook. You'll find my talk. And I, I give you quotes from Marx on his anti-Semitism. But, yeah, once you're a determinist, once you're a determinist, then it's inevitable you're going to be either a Marx type of class determinist or racist or both. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to youronbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, Show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...